Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be going over the Quick Mask tool in GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.18 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. I'll also be using a Wacom tablet for today's tutorial instead of a mouse. So if you have a Wacom tablet I do recommend using it here. If you don't, you can follow along with your mouse. But of course, before I get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com or you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to things like my GIMP Help Center app, eBooks like my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership off with a seven day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this photo for today's tutorial which you can download for free if you wanna follow along on Pexels. Click free download here and I just went with the medium download. So the goal of the quick mask tool is to be able to select or mask out objects quickly. So think of something like a layer mask where you can either paint something as opaque or transparent. That's going to be the same concept pretty much here with the quick mask tool. And you can access the quick mask tool using shift Q on your keyboard or you can come over here and click this little icon in the bottom left corner of the image window. You can also right click here on this little icon or whatever the right click is set up as on your Wacom pen. And you'll see a variety of options here. So for one, this is automatically set to mask unselected areas. So anything that is unselected is going to be covered with this red, slightly transparent color here. You can also set this up though to mask the selected area. So if I clicked on that, that's going to hide that red area until we paint on an area we want to select. So let me right click on here again. I do like this set to the default. You can also configure the color and opacity of the red here. So if you wanted a different color, you can click on this little color icon and change the color here in your quick mask color dialog. So for example, you could go with something like a blue color instead, but I'll click cancel and you can decrease or increase the opacity. So you can see in the bottom right corner that is showing you what the current opacity is based on this setting here. So if you wanted it to be less transparent, you could turn up the opacity or you can make it more transparent. But in this case, I will just go with the default. So I'll hit cancel. So the key thing to note about the quick mask tool is that anytime you paint white on a quick mask, it will fully select that area. If you paint black, it's going to deselect the area. On the other hand, if you paint something like a middle gray color, it will partially select it. So what I'll do first is hit the P key on my keyboard or come over here and grab my paintbrush tool. And I have my paintbrush set to a hardness of 50. Let me just change that to a hardness of 100. So this is a 100% hardness brush here. And I'll change my tablet to increase my brush size. And you can also use the left or right brackets on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size of your brush. So I want to have my foreground color set to white and my background color set to black. Right now it's kind of an off gray color. So if I hit this little icon here, that will reset my foreground and background colors. And then I'll just switch this by clicking the icon to white. So white is my foreground color. Now when I paint white on the quick mask, you'll see that that red is now going to disappear. So this indicates the selection area that I'm painting on here. So everything inside of this area is going to be selected when I'm done. And I'll decrease the size of my brush. So this is allowing me to quickly select complicated areas. So if I wanted to, for example, select the model here and then erase the background, this is allowing me to quickly with my paintbrush tool, select this area. And if you are especially good at digital painting, then this will be probably your tool of preference, especially when it comes to tasks such as erasing an image background. And I'm just going to quickly go through this for the sake of time. So I'm not going to do a perfect job of selecting this object, selecting the model. And you can always hit X to switch over to black as your foreground color. And anytime you paint black, it's just like a layer mask. That's going to correct these areas that I accidentally painted out. So I can switch between black and white until I'm happy with this. I can also hit the Z key on my keyboard 
and zoom in on an area if I wanted to get close to it. Hit the P key again to grab my paintbrush tool, decrease the size of my brush, hit Control Z, make sure I have black as my foreground color for this portion. Hit the X key again, switch over to white. So you guys get the point here. I'll hit the Z key again, hold the Control key and just click with my pen here to zoom out. Control Shift J, that's going to center my image up. All right, so now that we have a quick mask here painted, and I did quickly paint this, so I didn't do a perfect job, what I can do is toggle the quick mask off using that same Shift Q shortcut key. So if I hit Shift Q, that's now going to draw these marching ants. And this is called marching ants mode because it does draw the marching ants to show you the selection area. So now what we've done with the quick mask is we very quickly selected the model here and we could cut this out using Control X or we could paint inside the selection area or do a variety of other things. But one thing I wanna point out with the marching ants is that the boundary for the marching ants, which is denoting your selection area, is only going to show up for areas of 50% transparency or greater. So everything inside these lines is going to have a transparency of 50% or more. Everything outside the selection area is going to have a transparency of 50% or less. The reason I bring this up is if you feather the edge of your paintbrush as you are painting with a softer brush, or if you just create areas of 50% transparency or less, the marching ants boundary will not denote those areas. So sometimes it can be hard when you're viewing things inside the marching ants mode to know what exactly you have selected. Let me demonstrate here if you're confused. So let me come over to this composition here and you'll see I have a rectangle and it's got a fuzzy border, it's got fuzzy edges. So if I click to zoom in with my zoom tool, you'll see that the marching ants boundary ends here, but the fill actually goes a little bit outside the marching ants boundary. That's because there was partial transparency going out here, but it was less than 50%, whereas everything to the left of this line here is going to be greater than 50% transparency. So right here, this is fully opaque and it starts to fade out there. So let me just hit Control Z to back up to before I filled this in with black. So one of the benefits of the quick mask tool is that if I hit Shift Q, we could see those areas of partial transparency, including the areas that are less than 50% transparent. So I'll hit Shift Q again. Here was that line, Shift Q. You could see there's a little bit of partial transparency past that marching ants line. So the quick mask allows us to see all of the areas of partial transparency. So hold control and zoom out. There you can see the full selection area with the fuzzy borders there. So I'll come back here over to my image and let me hit Shift Q once again to turn on the quick mask. I'll hit the P key to grab my paintbrush tool. And this time I'm gonna change this to a softer brush. So in this case, you can see my brush has a hardness of 25. And I'll decrease the size of my brush here. So now when I paint with this and I'll hit Control Z, let me make sure that my foreground color is set to black right now. So when I paint with this, you'll see it's going to have a softer edge there, which means there will be some areas of partial transparency allowing the selection area to sort of fade out instead of having very hard edges. And this can be useful when you're erasing a background just to have some fade going on. And I definitely painted too much fading here, so I'll hit Z to grab my zoom tool. Let me make sure I'm not zoomed in too much there. Hit P to grab my paintbrush tool, decrease the size of the brush. Hit the X key to switch over to white and just paint some of these areas back in. I can hold the space bar to move around on the image. All right, so I hit Control Shift J to zoom back out on the image, have it perfectly centered here in my image window. So I've got a rough quick mask drawn here. So now I can add this quick mask as a layer mask. And the reason I can do this is that while we have the quick mask enabled, GIMP will automatically create a new channel with this quick mask. So right now I'm in the layers tab. If I come over to the channels tab, you'll see that I have a new channel created called quick mask. That will only display if I have quick mask mode enabled over here. But if I come back over here to layers, the reason this is beneficial is now I can click on my layer, right click on this and go to add layer mask. 
And down here I can select channel and now you'll see here I have my custom channel which is the quick mask. I want to make sure the invert mask option is unchecked and then I'll click add. So this will mask out everything around the area we painted with our quick mask. And you can see over here in the thumbnail the area that we painted is going to be white and the area that was masked out, the area that was made transparent is going to be painted black. And now if I hit shift Q that will turn off my quick mask and we still have the marching ants mode here to tell us what area we painted out here. And if I come back over to the channels tab, whenever I turn off the quick mask mode, that quick mask channel has now disappeared. So the question now is what do I do if I wanna save the selection area and use it at a later time? Well, you can easily do that in GIMP by coming over here while you're in marching ants mode and go to select, save to channel, and that will save your selection area over here as a channel and you can then access this at a later time whenever you want or you can add this as a layer mask again by coming over here and let's duplicate this layer real quick and we'll right click just to delete the layer mask we have on here right now. So once again right click, add layer mask and if we wanted to come back and add this selection area from the channel we created as a layer mask we could do that easily there. So I'll click add. So that will add the same layer mask in this case. Or if I right click delete the layer mask, if I just wanted to reactivate the selection area, so let's hit Control Shift A to deselect this. So let's say I wanted to at a later time reactivate the selection, I can come back over here to channels, click on my selection mask copy, and then click this little icon here, and that will reactivate my selection. So let's come back to the layers tab and delete this duplicate layer that I created. Another feature of the quick mask tool is it allows us to copy just the selection area and then paste that selection area onto another composition. So to do that, first off, I'm going to open up a new image. So I'll go to file, open recent in my case, and just open up a random image here. So let's come back here to this image. So if I hit shift Q, that will turn on my quick mask, of course. And what I can do now is hit control C and that will copy the selection area. If I come over to my image and just hit control V, that's only going to paste the colors of my mask here. So that's not what we want. So I'll just delete that. What I have to do is turn on the quick mask option here. So you'll see the red there again, control V this time. And now you'll see that will paste the quick mask selection that we created on our other composition. And then I'll come over here to the floating selection and click this little anchor icon. So now you'll see the area that we masked out before. And if I hit shift Q, that will enter this into marching ants mode. And now there is our selection. So that allows us to very easily copy a selection from one composition onto another composition. And of course I can do whatever I want with this. For example, if I hit control I to invert the selection, I can come over here, right click on here, go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection and click add. And that will mask out the shape of the model from the last photo. So I'll hit control Z to back up and control shift A to deselect that area. Another feature of the quick mask tool is that we can draw gradients on the quick mask. And really we can use any paint tool that we want on the quick mask. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to use a gradient. So I'll turn on the quick mask here for this image and come over here to the bucket fill tool, click and hold, and then come over here to the gradient. So tools are automatically grouped in GIMP 2.10.18 or newer. And I'll come over here to the gradient itself. I do need to make sure I'm at least drawing white, but in this case, I wanna go from white to black. So I'll go to foreground and background RGB here. And right now I just have my shape set to linear. So now if I click and drag my gradient, and let me make sure the repeat mode here is set to none extend. Now you'll see in the top left, this is creating full transparency. And then the bottom right, this is full opacity here. So this area in the top left is going to be fully selected. This area is not going to be fully selected. Of course, I can reverse the gradient here if I want to. And I can also change the shape to whatever I want. So something like radial, and then I can change the middle of our circle here. So it's in the middle of the image. But when I hit the enter key, that will apply my gradient. And now if I hit shift Q, you'll see because I drew a radial gradient, this will just show up as a circle. And some of you guys might be confused, but remember that the marching ants are only going to select areas of 50% transparency or greater. 
So if I hit Shift Q again, the marching ants are only selecting pretty much from this point outward since these areas out here are going to be selected because we painted these with white. So Shift Q again, if you wanna see a better representation of what this is selecting, we can come over here to the channels tab and I do need to make sure that the quick mask mode is toggled on. Here you can see what exactly the quick mask is selecting here. So anywhere that is white is going to be selected. Anywhere that is black is not selected. I can of course reverse this. So with my gradient tool selected, I'll just reverse the gradient and draw this gradient here. And I'll hit the enter key to apply this gradient and you'll see over here the quick mask has updated. So now it's the opposite. White is in the middle, black is on the outside. And if I hit Shift Q to toggle this off, you'll see the selection area has inverted. So everything that is 50% transparency or greater is now inside the circle. Everything 50% transparent or less is going to be outside. So anytime I wanna start the quick mask over, all I have to do is clear the selection. So Control Shift A will clear that. Now if I hit Shift Q again to toggle the quick mask back on, now we have a clean quick mask. One last thing I'll note here is that you can draw selection areas on the quick mask. So for example, I just grabbed my lasso tool. If I only wanted to fill in this area here, I can draw the lasso tool, hit the enter key. And then let's say I grab my gradient tool and I draw my radial gradient. This is just a totally random shape here. And then hit the enter key and then hit control shift A that will deselect that area. So now only the area inside that selection area has that gradient going on. And then if I toggle the quick mask off by clicking that icon or hitting shift Q, now you'll see the marching ants are only around this area. And then shift Q again to turn on the quick mask over here in the channels dialog, you could see exactly what is selected or partially selected here inside of that shape. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and also click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my other resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.